Well, folks, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, and I'm really glad that I set my expectations low. Because <laughs> this is not going well. <laughs> Hi folks, and welcome back to The Plot. Today, I'm gonna start, I'm not sure how far I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna start working on these compost bays. I'm hoping to renovate them and really spruce them up a bit, both in terms of their functionality and their aesthetic, because look at these, these are tired, they're horrible. To prevent kind of moisture getting in, all I've got on top at the moment is some old carpet, not great, and these builder's bags. What I really wanna do, is two main things. I want to line the inside of these so that things don't fall out and it means I can control the temperature and the moisture content in these bays more. And as well, I'm hoping, might be a little ambitious, but I'm hoping to get a lid put on both of these bays. And the first thing I think I'm gonna to need to do is take out some of these uh, and bring them up to the correct height before I can even think about installing a bin. In last week's episode, I emptied all the manure that I was storing in here and I'll show you a little bit close up the other issue with these compost bays. To put it bluntly, the problem is rot. You can see the bottom of all of these bays are just starting to rot away now. So what I need to do first is just establish whether or not it's worth replacing these or fixing them up. So I'm going to dig around them a little bit more, excavate them and see if it's just these bars then that's not the end of the world. The, the structure will stay together with just that rotting. But if it's the bits in the corners that actually hold it all together, then that's a bit more of an issue. And then the plan is, I mean, this should be fairly simple, but I find that it always should be simple and never is. But the plan is to use this stuff, which is Proplex. It's just a thin kind of, kind of similar to polycarbonate. It's like a very thin twin wall plastic um, and hopefully this can just go inside nicely and that will keep all of the material inside the compost bay and it will most importantly let me control the moisture when this is on top. I'm hoping to make a little lid structure and I just need to cut a little bit off but the other thing that this should do is prevent the wood from rotting. It should keep it a little drier because the surface of the wood won't be in contact with moist compost. That's the theory anyway. Let me dig these out and see whether or not they're salvageable. So the bits right at the bottom of these pallets are pretty rotten, but I think they've got enough integrity in them for today. Sometimes it's a case of doing a proper job or just getting the job done in the first place. Replacing all of this would just take far too long, although this one I think does need to come out anyway if I want it to be the same size. But what I am going to do is just put an extra um, kind of plank across this one just to hold it together a little bit better because this one isn't looking too good but they just need to last a few years and then if I need to replace the pallets and everything I can so I'm not too worried. Let me get a plank of wood for this. That little bit of extra wood is really not much but given that the middle kind of support of that pallet is pretty much rotten through I just thought it makes sense to give it something extra on the bottom. It's time for this one to come out and I think, oh yeah, this one is just, <laughs> this one has just got a couple of nails knocked in the back. So we'll get that out. Well, you can see this has changed. Thought I was recording, turns out the camera was not recording. Um, but I've got the new palette in, I've leveled it out pretty nicely. It's pretty much level, I mean, it's still just an allotment. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm kind of assuming slash hoping that I have enough wood that is the correct size to make some kind of lid. I'm looking at about 1.3 meters, maybe about 125, something like that. And I think the longest pieces of wood I'm gonna have are 1.2. I've remembered as well, I do actually have a handheld circular saw that <laughs> would have been very handy to bring today. Oh dear. This is one of those bits of the allotment that I always try to show as little as possible. But hopefully, in here I do have one or two timbers. Well, hopefully quite a lot of timbers. I do have some in the back garden at home as well. Plenty of old pallet wood that I've stripped down for various projects. A lot of these are gonna be one meter, which is just too short for the lid, unfortunately. 
put the one meter ones in a pile, not on front, not on top of the pallet that I might want to use soon. And then this is the good stuff. This is going to be the 1.2 meters. Now, it doesn't matter that a lot of this timber is properly old and manky because once it's covered and it's got something on top of it, it should protect it from the elements and this stuff will still last quite a long time. In the past, at some point, all of this timber was definitely sorted into piles of different sizes, but I find it never stays that way for very long. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> turns out I actually have much less uh, pallet wood stored here than I thought I did. There's definitely a little bit in the back garden, but what I have realized is that this pallet itself is pretty much the perfect size. So hopefully I can get some of these boards. Basically, I want to keep the front here, this this board underneath and then take off everything south of it. And I don't think I have my crowbar with me, but if I can get that off, cover that, put some hinges on it. Oh, I don't even necessarily need hinges. The weight of it should just keep it down. And then that will keep all of the moisture out, all of the rain out, and I can have much better control of what's going on in the compost. This pallet, on the other hand, is kind of earmarked for the actual structure itself. We're making this up as we go along, it's all fine. Do you like how I started this video with a little bit of a, an almost professional veneer? I tried to make it sound like I actually had a plan. Like maybe I knew what I was gonna be doing, but as always, we're just kind of making it up as we go along. This is so heavy because of all the soil the sodden wood at the bottom of it. Let's get this out of the way. So these three are kind of nice. I could put a lid on there now, but this, this bit is just a little bit too high here. I could potentially just buzz through that, but there are a lot of nails in the way, so that's going to be awkward. The back level, the back two are the same height, so it makes sense for everything to match. Now I've got one pallet. I've got one pallet at the moment, and I can either replace this one or this one down here. Um, this one is kind of where the finished compost goes and arguably it's the least important because once it's there it's fine but these two are the ones where I'm making the compost. These are the factory for the rest of the allotment. So I think it makes sense to prioritise these first. Ah! Ah, there's a thorn in my gloves. It's just gone right under my nail. Ow. Um, this compost bay is for a different day. I'm just trying to get it straight in my head what I need the other pallet for and it's exactly the same size as that. So yes, going there would make sense. And we're gonna have to figure out how to level this off at a later date as well. Let's offer up the other big pallet and see if it'll work as a lid. So funnily enough, I've just pushed this into place and we have good news. These blocks are this kind of reformed wood pulp thing. So if they all come away as easily as that, that is gonna make my life much, much easier. Fingers crossed. So it's not perfect. It's not quite level either, actually. Uh, definitely high at the front there, but that's fine. The water will run off. If I can get all of this off, which might be relatively simple, we might be in luck. And back here, where is this from? <laughs> I actually forgot about this. Oh, this is another heavy one, but back here, there is another whole pallet that I clearly got out of the way and forgot about, and I think that might make another good lid slash roof slash whatever word I can't remember. Or maybe that will make a good frontage. Might be better as a frontage. Let's focus on this one first. good progress after a little bit of work. I've got this looking kind of suitable. It overlaps a little there and a little here, but you can see a few of the planks on the top are kind of rotting away. A lot of the planks underneath were rotting away, so I might try and replace those, but I've actually started filming this little clip because I have just found this in my boot. And this is just really a reminder to always make sure you wear proper footwear when you're working with this kind of thing because that was all the way 
into the sole of my boot. And it's a good thing that I'm wearing my stout work boots, otherwise that would have been a little bit of an issue, wouldn't it? I can't, <laughs> I've just been staring at this for a little while in disbelief. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if my shoe will remain waterproof, but wow, quite lucky, I think. I really cannot quite get the design right in my head. I think I am going to have to put... Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> quite a lot of time has passed and I've been umming and ahhing about the design of this for uh, a little while now. I can't quite exactly decide what to do. I think this is... I mean, it's, it's not quite the perfect size. I would like it if it was just 10 centimetres wider so it sat properly. Uh, it is, it's got quite a slope on it, but I think that's fine. I'll just say that that was deliberate for drainage. <laughs> so the water runs away from it. Um, I think, I'm wondering whether or not it's necessary to put a hinge on the back. And because it's quite heavy, I think it's probably fine to just kind of leave floating on here for now, just leave sat. Um, the idea of the wind picking this up, that's quite hard to believe. Although if I've got a layer of Proplex on the top, it might, oh, I don't think it would act like a sail. The plastic might get ripped out itself though. I think for now I'm going to leave this on top of here and probably someone will comment and have just some kind of ingenious solution. Uh, one thing that I do need to do, uh, which is very important, is kind of brace this at the front as well. In here, there's only kind of two vertical pieces of timber going down for me to put the Proplex into. And that means that there would be an awful lot of pressure on the Proplex and it would probably buckle. So I need to put some more wood in there. And I think for now, I'm just gonna leave this on top. I did wonder as well about replacing some of this wood. It's a bit ratty, but it will do the job of keeping the water off for now. So yes, I think I'm gonna try and line the middle and then at least it'll feel like I've made some progress, hopefully. So this is a bit naff, but, but it's literally just so that the Proplex, the plastic has something to push against as I fill this with compost, because otherwise I think it might get a bit sad. I think what Tony does over at Simplify Gardening is he coats the whole lot of his pallets. And what I've done is I've bought the wrong stuff. This is in sheets. And I think it's actually much better to buy this in a roll. Um, it's probably cheaper to buy it in a roll. People also cover their beds with this, um, which is much easier to do when you've got it in a roll. <laughs> Um, and if you cover the whole pallet, obviously that will keep the whole thing watertight. I'm just going to do the inside to hold the compost in for now, and maybe I'll do the outside at a later date when I've got a little bit more. Really, it's quite amusing how little of this has gone to plan. Um, these sheets don't even really, they're not going to go together smoothly. You know, look at this little extra bit. <laughs> If I had it in a roll, I could maybe go this way. But obviously, that's way too much left over. I could do that there. Maybe this can fold. That actually works okay with a little overlap. Oh, it's going to stay there for me. Very nice. One issue is it's slightly too high as well, so what I'm going to do is bury it. I'm hoping this stuff is UV stable. Uh, I'm assuming if Tony over at Simplify Gardening has used this, it is. Uh, because the last thing we want is for this to start breaking down, going into the compost. But we'll see. So these are going in. I'm really happy with these, but they are quite a lot of faff to put into compost bays that are already established and kind of in the ground. I think my one piece of advice would be if you're setting up your compost bays, make sure you get pallets which are all the same size. It makes things so, so much easier. And if you coat the inside and the outside right from the outset, 
it just works so much better. It means you can keep the heat in your compost a little bit better, so the compost is going to work more. You can keep the moisture out as well. You can control how much moisture gets in there, which is really vital. There's just loads and loads of reasons to do this right up front. We're losing the light, so all I'm going to do is say thank you ever so much for watching. Check back next week, and hopefully I will have an update on how both of these palettes are looking. And a very special thank you as well to Tony C. Smith and Michael Ryan, my Chili Pepper tier patrons. Check out the Patreon below. If I get to 50 patrons by the end of this grow season, I've pledged to eat the hottest chili that I grow. <laughs> so that could be quite fun. Hopefully I'll see you again next week for that update.